it's uh it's it's been something that's been spoken about since before i was born um and yet for many people who are my age and sometimes a bit younger it still seems to be almost a new concept that's still deniable um i think the evidence is clear that there is change going on and it appears to be affected by human activity where i'm not an expert at all is on the point of whether some of that climate change is just something that would happen naturally anyway and that human activity is merely accelerating it rather than creating it completely but it is happening I don't think it's the biggest. I think um, I think there are more polluting forms of transport and more polluting industries than automotive. Um, I think for for genuine reasons, I think a lot of legislators, particularly within the EU, are um, have pushed it forwards and obviously car manufacturers <clears throat> excuse me have have got to gradually uh, comply with those regulations um however for the automotive manufacturers there's a, a massive massive cost of investment up front to get all this electric technology on board in a relatively short space of time at the end of the day but I think overall, in time, maybe in 10, 20 years time, those companies that have survived the transition, as well as the new car companies that have come on in the switch to electrification, I think they should have a more profitable business model because the, the greater packaging ease of, of electric components compared with petrol and diesel engines, um, should allow them to have greater creativity and allow allow them to produce models people want to buy uh, more readily uh, and adapt to change more quickly as well. They are a significant factor, but I would suggest that one one transportation industry that completely gets overlooked or seems to uh, by legislators is uh, the shipping industry um, massive container ships these enormous cruise ships use comparable amounts of fossil fuels for tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of vehicles on the road um, and yet it seems to be primarily private motorists um, that have to bear the brunt of the, the cost and the change uh, on the ground, so to speak. Um, and obviously there would be cost implications if the shipping industry was forced to go down cleaner routes, but um, that seems to be a bigger problem to me, shipping rather than road transportation. Yes, I do. On a on a more localized level, definitely within, say, urban areas, um, it, the air is certainly cleaner as a result um, of of a greater number of electrified vehicles being on the road. Um, and yes, it will be having a positive impact in slowing that change down. But it's only a small piece of a very big jigsaw in that regard. And some of those other bigger pieces need addressing very quickly. In Ukraine, you mean? Yeah. Um, yes, it, it certainly seems to have. Uh, and it seems to have exposed a number of 
nations, particularly within continental Europe, that have got a large dependency on uh, on Russian supply of fossil fuels. Um, but yes, I suspect so. Um, I it's always difficult to know exactly, um, but one one suspects that maybe some of the uh, petrol and diesel firms have also decided it's a useful opportunity to raise prices as well. Um, you know, prices are extraordinarily high compared with where they were even six months ago. Um, and yet <clears throat> we still have this unusual paradox where you can go into a supermarket and still pay more for bottled water than you will for a, the same amount of petrol or diesel which uh, seems equally wrong. I certainly think it will persuade those who can afford to, or who are on the brink of changing their car anyway to do so. Um, I suspect for those who can't afford to do so, or have only recently taken on board a, a conventional combustion engine vehicle, it will probably just encourage them to drive less. Uh, it has, although I've been personally more fortunate in recently, I've been testing a lot of uh, fully electric vehicles. Um, so while the cost of electricity has clearly gone up very recently as well, it's still more cost effective um, most of the time than than going for petrol or diesel. Um, so that would be something I would hope to continue personally. Yeah, if if you've got the uh, the ability to have a, a charge point at home. Um, Generally speaking, and this, this is only ballpark figures, but generally speaking, you will spend around about, depending on your tariff, about a third to half the cost you would on petrol or diesel for a similar amount of mileage covered and so on. Um, if you frequently have to use uh, the, the rapid charge points on the motorway network, for instance, uh, where the costs of those have increased significantly. Um, it's not impossible to find examples where they're actually really expensive to the point where it might be 80, 90, or even close to 100% of the cost of petrol or diesel. Um, but then again, that's, you know, most people who drive a fully electric vehicle don't tend to regularly charge at those kind of places. Most do it at home. So, yeah, generally speaking, if you're thinking of making the switch in terms of the fuel stroke energy to power the vehicle, um, if you're doing it mainly from home, you'll be looking at certainly less than half of the, your normal cost. Yeah, there, there are plenty. Um, they're certainly not for everybody yet, which is something the legislators are going to have to think very carefully and quickly about over the coming decade. Um, but yes, depending on where you live, it could be that, as you suggest, you're in a, a, a tower block or you're in, say, uh, houses that have no off-street parking. Um, we frequently see images on social media where people have uh, put those cable guards over their, their charge thing uh, across a path, something like that. But no, the infrastructure needs to massively improve. Um, but it's going to also cause areas, uh, cause problems, sorry, in areas where people don't have dedicated on street parking because, you know, they're going to need somewhere to regularly be able to charge up. Um, but, you know, one would hope as the next decade passes that the number of public charge points massively increases. Um, I suspect there'll be lots of employers who have their own parking areas will also massively increase the number of charge areas too. Inevitably though, there will be a significant proportion of the population, I believe, that unfortunately it, it's 
a compromise to switch to electric vehicles um, where they don't have the on -street, off street parking they don't have a regular set parking space on street for instance um, that they maybe work from home so they they don't need to go to an employer and potentially use their parking um, and as i've already mentioned you know public charging tends to be quite a bit more expensive anyway um, and I suspect by the time the majority, or by a, the time a lot of people are using electrified vehicles, most of the time the government will need to find some kind of way of uh, putting some extra duty on that charge as well in order to compensate for what's missing from fossil fuel fuel duty charges. Uh, that's a yeah that's a tricky one i mean um extreme e certainly i would imagine the impact is minimal at the moment um i would i i wouldn't be surprised if if a significant proportion of motorsport fans have never even heard of it let alone seen an extreme e race Formula E, on the other hand, uh, I mean, it's again, it's an interesting one because quite a few manufacturers, uh, say four or five years ago, moved to Formula E from other forms of motorsport they were involved with because they felt it was the better thing to do. Um, Audi, Porsche, BMW, for instance, and Mercedes uh, either all added Formula E to their programs or or um or stopped everything else they were doing switched to solely to formula e the fact that all of them have now either pulled out or will pull out towards the end of this year to switch back to other forms of motorsport such as you know constant rumor around porsche and audi moving to formula one that they've not been involved with uh for some significant time is indicative that as worthy a notion as Formula E is in terms of promoting brands and therefore increasing recognition for electric car buyers to go into showrooms, I suspect it's not having quite the positive effect that those companies would have hoped, hence the switch to other forms of motorsport that involve internal combustion engines. Uh, I, I think there's 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 not one simple answer to that. Um, cost is bound to be a significant factor. Uh, for others, the environmental impact is bound to be a factor too. And that's again not to perpetuate this myth that fully electric vehicles are completely clean. They're clean at the point of use, but obviously there's a huge amount of environmental. Uh, disturbance and, and carbon production in the production of electric vehicles and the batteries that go with them and the shipping them around the world. Um, I think quite a few people want them because they offer um, significant performance advantages, generally speaking, over petrol and diesel cars. Uh, it could be that they're attracted by the styling of some of them because not all, but quite a few look unusual or very different from anything else on the road. But I suspect for most, it's a combination of several, if not all of those factors with cheaper running costs, not cheaper purchase price, but cheaper running costs being the primary driver. <laughs> 